Hello students. In this problem we're going to solve a differential equation involving the delta function that is on this right hand side and the physical setup for this problem is you have this <coughs> force um, hitting this beam and uh, it's kind of like a, uh, a diving board right it's like you're jumping here and um, that's going to cause a deflection in the beam so that's going to cause this beam to bend downward and uh, and um, start to move here. It's not um, tethered here at the um, right hand side. Um, so the setup for the problem here is um, there's uh, it's at equilibrium position there's no initial velocity um, and then um, that's over here on the left hand side where it's anchored down. On the right hand side um, there's no acceleration and um, this is actually um, the third derivative would be called something called a jerk. That's if you were to torque this down or pull this down very quickly. Okay. Um, so it's the rate of change of the acceleration. So nothing like that is happening. Um, the tricky part of this problem is while you have these initial conditions, um, what do you do with um, these boundary conditions here on the right hand side? Or these, um, why, I'm sorry, while you have these boundary conditions here at zero, um, what do you do with the boundary conditions at the right hand side? And you'll see that play out when we take the Laplace transform of this um, equation. All right, so let's do that. So I rewrite the equation by dividing everything by the um, EI term here, which is just a parameter, the Young's modulus, <clears throat> and um, that's um, how stiff this material is. Okay, and uh, I take the Laplace transform of each side of the equation. So um, the Laplace transform of the fourth derivative would be an s to the fourth, capital Y minus, and then we get decreasing powers of s and increasing orders of the derivative. And if I take the Laplace transform of the right hand side, the w naught over ei would be a constant, so the um, the Laplace transform of the delta function is e to the minus l over 2s. Okay, I impose the boundary conditions, y0 equals 0 and y prime to 0 equals 0. And now um, I solve for capital Y of s, so I move everything over to the right hand side, so that's just a little bit of algebra. And uh, now we don't know what to do with the um, y triple primed of 0 and the y double primed of 0, but those are just um, constants, so I'm just going to treat them as constants for now. So hold on um, for a couple minutes, we'll get to um, what we're going to do with these boundary conditions at L. I'll show you that once we solve for y. So I take the, um, I'm going to set this up for the inverse Laplace transform. So um, since I have an s to the fourth in the denominator, I need to put a 3 factorial, which is 6, on the top and then divide by 6. Similarly, since I have s to the fourth here in the denominator, I have to put a 3 factorial on the top, and that's 6, so I divide by 6, and then since this is s cubed, I need a 2 factorial, which is 2 on the top, and then I put a 2 down here in the bottom. Now I'm ready to take Laplace transforms. The, the Laplace transform of um, 3 factorial over s to the fourth is going to be t cubed, and similarly here we'll get a t cubed, and here we'll get a t squared. Um, oops, I mean x squared. Okay, I forget. I'm, I keep forgetting I'm with a boundary value problem here, so we'll be using x's instead of t's. Um, all right, so now um, when I take the Laplace transform of this term here, um, the e to the minus L over 2 means we're shifting by an L over 2 with the um, a unit step function. You could look that up in your Laplace transform table. And um, this is what the solution looks like. Um, however, we have to solve for y double prime to 0 and y triple prime to 0, um, and we'll be able to do that given these boundary conditions. Um, so we need to know what those are. Um, uh, and we're given that y double prime to l is 0 and y triple prime to l is 0. So recall that the um, derivative of the heaviside function is the delta function, and the uh, delta function of x minus l over 2 is 0 when x is not equal to l over 2. Similarly, we can take higher order derivatives of the heavy side function, and uh, we would just get higher order derivatives of the delta function. And uh, of course, those higher order derivatives of the delta function behave similarly to the delta function itself. Um, they'll be 0 when x is not equal to l over 2. Now, I say that because I want to know what y double prime of L is. So I take y double prime of the solution here, and here I just use the product rule twice um, on uh, this product here. And uh, if you work all that out, you get here. But notice that everything to the left here involves delta functions. So when I plug in 
L, um, I'll have the delta function of um, L over 2, and um, oh, um, yeah, I'll have the delta function of L over 2, and that'll be um, 0 because um, um, X is not L over 2, it's L, okay? So, um, so I need the delta function of I need the delta function of zero um, would be infinity, and um, I don't have that here. I have the delta function of L over two, so um, I get zero. So all these terms involving the delta function are going to be zero, and the only thing that's left here is the heavy side function of L over two, which is equal to one, um, because it gets turned on at L over two, and I'm plugging in L, so. Um, this this term here will be one, so I'm left with a um, a six times um, l over two, and uh, I get that there, and I think that um, six actually cancels out with the uh, six in there. Um, I can worry about that later, and then I get um, I plug in l here and over here. Okay, then. Um, if I take the third derivative, okay, I'll be taking derivatives of all these terms. And actually, what's going to happen here is I'm just going to get a bunch of junk here with delta functions. The only thing that's going to survive is um, this term here once I plug in the um, L for x. So I'm just going to leave that like this. And then when I take, um, so when I take the, so in other words, when I do the product rule, I'm just going to have a whole bunch of delta functions. Even when I do the product rule in this term, I'll get a delta function for der taking the derivative of this term. Um, the only thing I'll survive is when I take the derivative of this term and leave this term alone. So that leaves me with that, this term here. Um, okay. So then um, that leaves me with um y triple primed um, because I just take the derivative with respect to x and I just get a 1 and um, this is a constant so it's 0 so I have these two boundary conditions set up so let's uh, set those equal to 0 and that means when I solve for y double prime to 0 I get L over 2 w naught over ei and in the other case I'll get y triple primed equals uh, minus w naught um, over ei Yeah, so I took care of the um, 6 that I said was over here. Um, if you're wondering about that, there's a um, there's a 6 here, and these cancel. Okay, so um, since I solved for the initial conditions, I just plug them into my solution, and that's it. So um, the hard part of this problem is um, realizing that the... Um, derivative of the heavy side function is a delta function and then using the product rule to get rid of um, a bunch of these terms um, but uh, once you um, do that and you just realize you get a bunch of delta functions um, for the third derivative um, the problem becomes pretty easy to solve and here's your solution all right good luck